two games down. Now we transition to game number three between the Ghost Ballers and Trilogy. Our rosters presented by State Farm. Mike Bibby, Ricky Davis in the backcourt for George Gervin's squad. Jason Terry, the Jet, played for Avery in Dallas, is the captain for Trilogy. But Avery, the reason why this team's won four in a row, this guy, David Hawkins. Yeah, la last week uh, their coach, Kenyon Martin, did not look at uh, the Trilogy last week at halftime, specifically Hawkins. And because of Kenyon Martin's motivational technique, Hawkins turned it around in the second half, and uh, he's just been on fire. Kenny Martin's technique, silence at the break for Trilogy. It worked out. Ghost Bowlers, meanwhile, they snapped a three-game slide last time out. And the big reason why, a terrific trio. Taylor, Davis, Johnson, they balled out against Tri-State last week. And specifically, Mike Taylor, he bounced back uh, after struggling the last couple of weeks. And here's a guy, you know, they need his energy and his passion and his toughness. Ricky Davis, he's been consistent all year. He's scored in double figures in all of the games. So I just think, um, you know, Mike, Mike Taylor, uh, his, his defensive prowess, uh, obviously uh, the addition of Chris Johnson, you know, he had 12 points last week. His length and versatility. You know, being able to mix up the defense is going to be very helpful for uh, Iceman George Gervin on one side. There's Kmart. Kenyon Martin was a player when Trilogy won the title two years ago, and now their head coach. Let's revisit the key rules in the big three. First to 50 wins it. There's no game clock. The 14-second shot clock reigns supreme. Free throws, if you're fouled, shooting a two-point shot, you'll take that from the line. Foul shooting a three. It's from beyond the arc. And if you are fouled, shooting a four-point shot, you get one chance from one of those three circles for four points. Trilogy and White were underway. Game number three. Hawkins, Samato Samuels, James White. And here is White. First touch. Hits the three. Hit the game-winning three last weekend in Milwaukee. Trilogy with the early lead. His walk-off wave reminded me of what Damian Lillard did to the Oklahoma City Thunder when he hit that game-winning shot to knock the Thunder out and basically disrupted the Thunder entire team. They traded Russell Westbrook. And Dame did the bye-bye to the bench. Square at him as Hawkins missed from four-point range. At least white wave to the crowd. And he tipped that about two feet from your head out of bounds. So for the Ghost Ballers, you have Bibby and Davis starting. And you mentioned Chris Johnson coming over from the triplets in the trade that sent Jamaria Moon to the first place team. Bibby for three. Oh, well short for the former guard in Miami. Yeah, unlike our first two games where teams got off to a hot shooting start, um, the Ghost Ballers are struggling from the field. And sometimes that's the worst thing that can happen when you shoot an air ball because you, you don't really give your team a chance, to, you know, to get an offensive rebound and the ball goes out of bounds. But I guess it's better when you don't allow the defensive team to get the ball, retrieve the ball and score. Avery, looking at who Trilogy has out there, Hawkins, White, and Samuels, as Johnson steps out and nails the three, and the Ghost Ballers tie this game at three. So if you're George Gervin, you look at some guys with size and strength and height for Trilogy. What are the matchup problems that the Ghost Ballers have to be aware of? Well, they definitely have to be aware of Hawkins, you know, because Hawkins, obviously, we talked about him in pregame, you know, He's a big point of emphasis for, for George Durbin in his squad because he's so versatile. Yeah. He can post up. He, he's got, you know, three-point range. I think he's a much-improved ball handler. Here's Hawkins. Hesitates. Drives the switch. Never hit the rim. And the Ghost Ballers finally score as Johnson puts it in. We talked about in our first two games. It's all about awareness. What the little things, the small details. 
Samuels Davis tries. Samuels wins the battle in his second game with Trilogy. Made his debut last week. He had 17 in that game. Yeah, Kenyon Martin talked about it um, this morning. Say Samuels can be a difference maker in this game because of his size. Ghost ballers, they really don't have a lot of muscle inside. White, well, he's behind the backboard, air ball, Davis right there to bring the ghost ballers to within one. Ghost ballers, winners of four in a row, or rather trilogy, excuse me. Hawkins gets free but misses. Ghost Ballers 3-3 three and three record. A win tonight would go a long way before the ball out next week. Johnson, airtime, shot no good, and Hawkins is there. And nice pocket pass by Ricky Davis, but you know, Johnson's got to finish that play inside. This is work, this is going to be problematic all night for Ghost Ballers when Sam is posted, post up in the inside. Oh, White, the ball was not deflected, that's so they try to travel. Yeah, that's the travel. Same use in, inside has to finish every single time. He has a significant weight advantage, strength at, advantage. And the key, can you feed him early and often? Trilogy. Big thing they have in their favor, they're the only team that's beaten power. So if they win, they'll get to five and two. They'll actually have the tiebreaker against power. And Avery Johnson, what a turnaround after their first two games when they really struggled. Boy, this is a tale of two parts of the season for Trilogy. And Kenyon Martin, their coach, talked about, you know, finishing game strong and also shooting the ball better from behind the three-point line. And you can see they're shooting 41-plus from behind the three compared to 34% uh, in their first two games. And Kenyon Martin's actually talking to his team. He's talking to them. I wonder if he's going to go to the stair and no conversation at halftime. He stared at the basket. I could not believe it. You hear that? Yeah. That's the silence. <laughs> he gave them the silence treatment, but they responded. Give them credit. A big comeback against the Ball Hogs last week in Milwaukee. This guy's hometown. Mike Taylor in for the Ghost Ballers. Difficult shot going to his left. White corner three. Look at Samuels. But Johnson takes it. Taylor wants it for three. Taylor, he's got the steal. Look at the energy from Taylor. Hangs and finishes. This guy comes in, he takes three shots, gets one to go. And he put on a show last week in, in Chicago. The fans just loved him. He had 14 points. He dives on the floor. I mean, this guy is not really a muscular guy, but he, he plays tough. Comes in, gives the Ghost Ballers their first lead. Hawkins, look it down low. Taylor Samuels. doesn't. He doesn't back down there from anybody. A shot clock violation. He doesn't back down from anybody. He takes the ball to the basket strong. He's not an easy guy to post up on defense. Solomon Jones coming on for Johnson. Quintel Woods enters for Samuels and heard a round of applause. Carlos Arroyo, the former Heat, who played at FIU in college at Florida International, has come on for Trilogy in this return to Miami. Johnson into Woods, blocked away. Second effort, Johnson running, hook shot. Ghost Ballers extend the lead. We talked about it with Carlos Boozer. Who, you know, he got released and he came back and he didn't put his drop his head. He didn't leave the big three. Now in a situation with Chris Johnson, you know, hey, he was a high draft pick in the big three and he gets traded. Expanded role now with the Ghost Ballers. They need his size. And there he is, gets the ball again. Taylor wants it for four. 
never hit the rim. Woods fouled hard. But in a lot of ways, that's what you have to do if you're Solomon Jones. Could have been excessive. Now I'm sitting here with you, and you know, game number one, Michael Rappaport got a towel. Well, take a look, Avery. You've spoken, and the big three has delivered. Thank you, Justin Williams and company. Asking ye shall receive. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. It's hot in Miami in the summer. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Get a towel off. Yes. We'll take it. Yeah, I'm, I'm working hard over here like James Brown, Ed. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Uh, Mike Taylor smiling right now. They're going to take a look at that last foul. First to see if the shot hit the rim. Yeah, it looked like it hit the rim. Oh, very close. Close. I love uh, receiving gifts, Ed. I'm going to work out this week. Hold on to that one. Hold on to this towel. Yes. I always love going to the gym with something new. And it's good to know you're there just about every day. Great to be with you from Miami as the review continues. So that was a shot, and now here is the foul. Jones decking Woods. Yeah, I think it's the wind-up. If you would have gone straight up with both hands, Maybe it's a common foul, but. Let's see how they enforce this, because technically, if it didn't hit the rim, they'd have to clear. We're going to get the explanation right now. The ball hit the rim or not, the ball doesn't hit the rim. So we have a foul who tells me to shoot one for two. OK. So they ruled that it did not hit the rim. It was close. And Woods will get a two-point shot. We always appreciate when the officials check in with us as well. That's what I love about replay and when the officials come over and talk to us. Transparency, that's what the fans want. No doubt. And technology has improved so much, even recently. High low counter and a foul. Taylor to Johnson and a chance at three. What an extraordinary pass by Mike Taylor. When you get the switch, you have to decide, do I want to take the defender off the dribble or attack the mismatch inside. Johnson had the advantage on Carlos Arroyo. Ghost Ballers with the lead on Trilogy by five. Well, don't forget to check out all about the big three for interviews, recaps, player profiles, and more. New episodes premiere every Thursday right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, back in the day, Carlos Arroyo, native of Puerto Rico, took flight with the Miami Heat two years, including a run to the finals 2011 with the big three. Carlos Arroyo with Michael Rappaport. All right, Carlos, you played college basketball in Florida. You had a run with the Miami Heat. How does it feel to be back on the court here in Miami? Uh, it feels great. Playing in front of my friends and family is always a feel good feeling. All right, now you guys are in a tight game here. These guys aren't going away. You guys aren't going to back down. What are you going to do, you personally, Carlos Arroyo, to pull out the win? i got to bring my energy, make the right decision, get my team back in play. All right, well, good luck in the, in the rest of the game. Guys, that's what we call unprecedented actors. That's my man Kenyon Martin. We call him Kmart right there on the bench. Coach Kmart. Best access in the business and the coolest customer in the big three. Not just Kmart, but Arroyo as well. Yeah, Arroyo had a terrific career. Still you know, makes his off-season home here in Miami. I asked him this afternoon in the lobby, you, you're never moving? He said, never, Coach. <laughs> He said, this is paradise. College here, and when you play here in the NBA, it's hard to relocate. I'm still jamming, and this is how we do it. Um, Montel Jordan song, released in 1995. How about Jones doing it with the block, and Johnson with the finish, but let's go back to our 90s music conversation. Yeah, yeah, 1995, that's a nice year. My son, Avery Jr., was born in 95. Never forget it. <laughs> 
But this is how we do it in the big three tonight. We've already had two terrific games. Game winner by Nate Robinson. Mike Taylor's out here hustling, playing with a lot of passion. How about this? A 13-0 run for the Ghost Ballers. It's a 10-point lead in Trilogy in Quicksand. In the midst of a four-game win streak, Arroyo ends that run for the Ghost Ballers, knocking it down from mid-range. Arroyo has always been a clutch mid-range shooter. Taylor off the mark from three. Look at the hustle. Look out on the baseline. Mike Taylor, you just have to love the energy he brings to the big three. Just the attempt at that Luke's ball. Probably was never going, going to get it, but I just feel bad for the young lady that was on the baseline. I'm glad nothing serious happened with a kick to the head. The high jumper, Mike Taylor. Yeah, foul before the inbound. She's doing just fine. And she's jamming. <laughs> This is how we do it, yeah. part three. I think Mike Taylor earlier he took a four-point play, a couple, you know, off-balance three-point shot. I think he can get better looks than that. Alex Scales, number seven for the Ghost Bowlers, is in. And White away matched up with James White. That's not easy. White with the post position and the foul is on scales on the perimeter. Yeah, look like Trilogy is going to need another Kenyon Martin wake up call some kind of way. They've gotten off to a slow start. White draws the extra defender. Arroyo fouled by Taylor. Now let's see if his feet were cleanly behind the line, if it's a two point shot or if it's a three point shot from beyond the arc. When you have the lead like the Ghost Ballers, two things you just can't do. One is take bad contested shots, and two, turn the ball over. But two B is fouling three-point shooters. <laughs> it is one. Trilogy didn't make him pay that time because he missed the three, but that wasn't a good foul. 18-10 Ghost Ballers. White driving kick, Arroyo three-pointer. This one's good on the flyby from Taylor. And Trilogy back within five. White, very impressive penetrating pitch or penetrating pass. Taylor resets. Tough shot. Air ball with the shot clock expiring and a violation here on the Ghost Ballers. Superb defense by Carlos Arroyo. Forced Taylor into a bad shot. Ricky Davis coming back in and Taylor gets a breather here for George Gerben. Especially in this world of analytics right now, you know, just how many positive plays with the group you can make when you're on the floor. How about James White? He's going to have a chance, Avery, at a three-point play. Yeah, you don't want to be a plus-minus player. You know, have one or two really good plays, and then you come back and turn the ball over twice or take two bad shots. So I'm trying to be a... Plus, plus player, um, that just adds up for your team in traditional statistics and also analytics. New age <laughs> here in 2019. And James White, veteran of 67 NBA games, hits it. 8-0 run for Trilogy. And they are back within two. And a 10-point lead for the Ghost Ballers has evaporated. Look at Scales. Their drive flips it up. No. Samuels trouble clearing. White wraps it around and Hawkins not home. But it's recognition in that situation. Samuels had Scales on him. All he had to do was back him in or pass the ball to White and, and get to the post where you have the advantage. Scales lets it fly. Samuels, Hawkins, White, the three trilogy starters. 
Hawkins, big screen, air balls the three. Now White was pulling Skelt's jersey and lands out of bounds back to the Ghost Ballers, even though that could have been a foul on James White. Yeah, it could have been. And just missed that call. That was a break for Ghost Ballers. And, and the clock is resetting to 14. Ricky Davis, the runner's good for the former Miami Heat. Now, a lot of players in the three games tonight who at some point played in Miami. Ricky Davis only seven games early in his career back in 2000-2001. White off the mark. Now loose ball foul. A push on Samardo Samuels. That was a play that Trilogy worked on over and over and over again. Middle pick and roll. And then they'll have an offensive player try to come up and screen the screeners man and pop white for an open shot. So Hawkins, you know, comes off of Samuels, then white back picks Samuels man and try to confuse the defense. And they did. He just missed the shot. First to 25 gets us to the break. It's amazing when you have a cute offensive play, how it works better when the ball goes in the basket. <laughs> the tip by Samuels is good. Little things so far in what's become a close game again. Trilogy back within two. Johnson almost with the throwdown from Davis. Wouldn't that have been the play of the night? Wow, it would have been close to Jason Richardson playing above the rim in our second game. Guys are just so athletic and explosive. Scales over White. Knocks it down. Alex Scales. He's hit seven threes in this big three season. Who does Ricky Davis remind you of with that headband? You want me to tell you? Ed? Please. You may not remember this game. Name Slick Watts. Ooh. <laughs> with Seattle. With Seattle. Before my time, but <laughs> on many highlight reels. And this will go back to the Ghost Ballers. It's amazing. We always find ourselves talking about Seattle. A great city. Obviously, they moved to Oklahoma City after 2008. Boy, they need an NBA team. Slick. Davis gets the balance. What do you say, Watts? We're at halftime. Ghost Bowlers. Avery, 25-18 advantage on a trilogy team. That had won four in a row. Yeah, and they're, they're understanding that their playoff lives are right now can go either way. And they, they've come out with fire. Uh, you know, George Gervin talked about his team getting off to a good start. Iceman, 40th pick in the 1974 draft. They had more than two rounds in 1974. He was a third round pick. They worked out just fine for Ice. Down to Michael with Mike Taylor. All right, I'm here with Ghost Baller Mike Taylor. Listen, you guys are in a tough game. What are you, Mike Taylor, going to do to pull this game out? Man, I'm going to keep providing the energy and be that spark plug off the bench. Whatever my team need me to do, rebound, take a charge, whatever needs to be done, I'm, I'm going to get it done. I like that about you. You have a lot of fun. You have a lot of energy. Have you always been that way? Man, since I can remember. How many hours of sleep are you able to pull off a night? I mean, I'm able to function off three. All right, cool. <laughs> Good luck in the rest of the game. All right, appreciate it. I love the way that guy plays. Mike Keys, Milwaukee's finest. Mike Taylor and the Ghost Ballers up 10 at one point. Seven point lead on Trilogy at the break in Miami. Big Three Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. Saturday night on South Beach. Ghost Ballers up at the break against Trilogy. Mike Taylor is mic'd up. somewhere to go. I didn't touch his feet. I didn't touch his feet. I didn't touch his feet at all. 
I didn't touch his feet at all. He had a place to Inside American Airlines Arena, Mike Taylor's team up against Trilogy at the break. Get going with Avery Johnson. Everyone is mesmerized as Luther Campbell puts on a performance. <laughs> Luther is jamming. Wow, he's going back. He's going back in the day. He's got Ice Cube on his feet. <laughs> well, we're enjoying this one. The Ghost Ballers right now enjoying a lead. What's well, been an exciting start to this triple header here in Miami. What do the Ghost Ballers need to do, including Chris Johnson, to wrap this went up against Trilogy. Yeah, Chris Johnson is playing extremely well. You know, his team only has one turnover, and, um, you know, he's 5 for 7 from the field, 12 points, and it's also about plus minus. When he's on the floor, you know, his team is a plus 12, so it's a great idea for Coach Gervin to keep him on the floor. Here are the first half numbers. Trilogy struggled, shot 33%. Johnson, key inside, just one turnover for the Ghost Ballers. And James White has missed six shots. Try and get back on track for Trilogy. Hope for them at least, Avery, is they can put together a comeback like they did last week in beating the Ball Hogs in Milwaukee. Another game where Kenyon Martin is not happy with his team's first half production. But we'll see if they can come alive. I agree with you, Ed. They can come alive, get on the basket first, which they just did. They're trying to finish a traditional three-point play. Samardo so Samuels. So he mentioned one turnover by the Ghost Bowlers in the first half. One of their first possession in the second leads to two. Davis to Johnson, pulls up. So for Trilogy, it's White, Samuels, and Hawkins. Chris Johnson, Ricky Davis, Mike Bibby for the Ghost Ballers. Look at this matchup inside. Samuels overpowers Johnson. I think you're going to see um, Trilogy consistently go to Samuels inside. I think this is a message that Kenyon Martin delivered at halftime. We probably say, why aren't we going to Samuels more often in, in the paint? Think about this. He made his season debut last week in that win against the Ball Hogs. His big three debut, in fact. 17 points, seven rebounds as Davis misses. That's a huge addition in week seven of a short season. Hawkins. Off his back foot, takes Bibby for a ride and scores. Here we go. This looks like a different team to start the second half. Kenyon Martin is off, off his chair, and he's into the game. Nice fake, but Johnson misses. You know you can't win on one possession, but it's possession after possession. What team can have the stamina, the mental toughness, the teamwork, the recognition of different situations. Avery 6-0 run for Trilogy to start the half. Back door and nicely done between Johnson and Davis. And because Ghost Ballers, they don't have a traditional back to the basket big guy like Samuel, so like Trilogy has Samuel, so they gotta move and cut, use their quickness. Hawkins, wow, spinorama off glass and good. He kept the play alive multiple times. Boy, and the Jet is on the runway on the bench. Jason Terry, that got him off his seat. He and Carlos Arroyo, Kenyon Martin. They're not backing down. There's no surrender with the trilogy. A dizzying display. And we're tied up at 27. A 9-2 run to start the half for Trilogy. Don't forget, they outscored the Ballhawks 38-18 after halftime last week. Davis denied by James White. And he's denied by Davis. Samuels, no. Davis denied again. Four-point shot, Bibby. Can you imagine if that went in? Yeah. I would buy a ticket to watch this type of defense. It's not just always about offense. Guys are battling defensively, blocking shots, not giving up on plays. Block party. In Miami. Yes. <laughs> you think 
you know, people love the party here in Miami. I think that's the understatement of the night. I just hope we get an invite <laughs> when it's all said and done. Samuels step to his left. Taylor, who's in, snatches and he's fouled by Samardo Samuels. Trilogy trying to get the lead back. Haven't led since it was eight to seven. So Royo in for Hawkins. And Avery, coming back to those block shots, you think about three on three in the big three. If the shot doesn't hit the rim, you can go right up, and there's a level of defensive awareness that has to come into play quickly. Absolutely. And now that when you block the shot and you keep it in bounds, you know, a lot of times you want to block. Guys love to block shots into the stands. But if you can block a shot and keep it in bounds, and team can go right back up and get an easy basket. Now, the call was a tie-up, and the possession arrow seem to trend in the direction of the ghost ballers. Now they're going to give this to Trilogy. White posting up on Taylor. Missed it. White once again finds Arroyo. Dazzling moves. Arroyo almost. Davis the fake. Ricky Davis. Popped out. Taylor now. Knocked down by White, and we get a whistle. Right now, you it's all about finding your teammate. Who's open? When you drive the ball to the basket, how can I create a shot for my teammate? I think they're calling for the jet. <laughs> We want Terry, Jason Terry, the captain of Trilogy. You know all about JTA. Yeah, I, I didn't have to say we we want Terry when I coached him or I want Terry. I just made sure he started and played most of the game. He was that good. Jason Terry, championship with the Mavericks in 2011. And the sixth man, his role evolves in Dallas. They certainly wanted him off the bench back then, and now the fans in Miami want him to enter right now. Boy, and I remember in, when Jason Terry was traded to the Mavericks and decided that ownership decided not to re-sign Steve Nash. You know, people talked about that was a, one of the biggest mistakes, but Mark Cuban has done a great job uh, as owner of the Mavericks. Team obviously went to the finals in 2006. We weren't successful there, but that gave the team a lot of experience when they went back in 2011. Dirk Nowitzki, legendary U European player, stretched four, made that position sexy. Wow. <laughs> the stretch four. All-timer, recently retired, and there's his teammate with Dallas. What do you say, Miami? The Jet wants some. All oh, smiles in South Beach. Kenny Mark was saying, you guys may want the Jet, but I want this W. I want this win. Now, a couple of years ago, as a player, he would have been up too. He's shifted to head coach in his third big three season. A trilogy, the champions two years ago, missed the playoffs last year at three and five. Davis off the bounce. Two point shot not there. Coming all the way, Avery Johnson. You notice I didn't move. I shook a little bit. How Solomon Jones put on the brakes, I have no idea. You were a little scared, Ed. We were on a collision course for disaster. <laughs> but I didn't move, Ed. I've gotten hit by bigger people like <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal floored me one time when I drove to the basket. There he is. A little more conventional. We that can was, say that now. Yeah, that was 178 pounds going against Shaquille. That was the year he, he weighed 300 pounds. He said he lost weight and got down to 292 in the following year. Those eight pounds, <laughs> momentum and mass. Speaking of big guys who've made an impact, Samardo Samuels hits. Samuels quietly has scored 12 
He had 17 last week, and Trilogy with its first lead since early in the ballgame. Taylor teardrop, Samuels back for the board. Well, speaking of organizations, what, what an impressive run throughout his career here in Miami for Pat Riley. Yes. Came down in 1995. Those great rivalries in the late 90s. Came back to coach 2006. His stamp is on the whole organization. Yeah, I thought he would never leave the Knicks. <laughs> you, you never say never. Samuel's there for the rebound. It's amazing you go to New York, Miami, Los Angeles. You talk to former players and people associated with the NBA. All comes back to Pat Riley. There are just so many stories. Yep, Pat Riley, um, you know, obviously with the Lakers and Showtime, and then he changes his coaching philosophy a little bit, and the Knicks with Charles Oakley and Derek Harper and Patrick Ewing and Starks, they became a defensive team. Yes. So he went from Showtime to more of a half-court team that just focused on defense and getting stops, and he evolved. Avery, let's go back to last week in Milwaukee. Trilogy, they were down big, down by 12 at the break. But Hawkins and company, a 38-18 surge after halftime. White waving goodbye to Milwaukee. Trilogy, fourth straight win, 51-43. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. You know you're playing against a winless team coming into the game. There's no pressure on the team that haven't won a game in the ball hogs. And it took a serious wake-up call at halftime for Trilogy to get his act together. Here's the first half versus the second last week against the Ball Hogs. 27 from the big two of Hawkins and Samuels. And right now, Trilogy by four. We're down seven at the break tonight against the Ghost Ballers. Yeah, White. Good defense by Taylor. Yeah, he's going to think about that shot tonight. He's got to finish that inside against a smaller defender in Taylor. Ed Cohen, Avery Johnson, Michael Rappaport, our CBS Sports Network crew here in Miami. Taylor fouled by James White. He's going to shoot a two-point shot. Look at the emotions from White. Thought he was in good position here. Probably hit Taylor on the head. Good call by the ref. It's better sometime when an offensive player is driving like that to just go straight up and not come down and foul him in that situation. Make him make a tough shot, especially when you have a significant size advantage. Taylor still with four points. Got in the passing lane. Yeah. And almost got the steal. When you come off a pick and roll like Arroyo did, you got to be a threat to score. He was only a threat to pass in the defense. Uh, read his eyes. That was an opportunity for him to shoot one of his mid-range shots, with, which he's definitely accustomed to. Trilogy, Arroyo, Samuels, and James White. Samuels open. Rebound, Alex Scales out there for the Ghost Ballers with Solomon Jones and Mike Taylor. Scales off the mark. Gets the rebound from Samuels. Scales. Jones kept it alive. Scales again. That time, third charm is good. See, three strikes you out. He said, I'll get up to bat and swing again. Scales is it two threes. One point game. Arroyo slips it. Samuels, nobody's fouled by Taylor. At this point of the game, Trilogy, pick and roll with Samuels, but roll, don't pop. I think it's important for him to roll, especially with the switching defenses from the Ghost Ballers, or post him up. Just do what got you to lead, and don't try to get too super creative offensively. It's real simple. These are the three on the floor right now for Trilogy. As Samuels misses, White, Hawkins, and Samuels. Be a matchup nightmare. Now Taylor right into the hands of Kenyon Martin. And that's what I was talking about um, with White. You know, in that situation, 
you know, James White just needs to force Taylor into a bad decision. Kenyon Martin is screaming, saying, let's play inside out. Yes, he'll do it. Samuels on cue extends the lead to three. Yeah, now that's that's a good shot there. He got, got his feet set, got the double team on the post, got two on the ball. There was no rotation and no hesitation from Samuels. How about Alex Scales? In his NBA career, played nine seconds in a game in 2005 for San Antonio against the Suns. Gales did a couple of shots since coming off the bench. Hawkins looked like he might have traveled. White to save, right to Scales. Fires a three and hits it. Alex Scales stepping up for the Ghost Bowlers. We get a timeout here in the second. Ghost Bowlers have reclaimed the two-point lead. When you offensive rebound the basketball, that's the easiest time to get a wide open three point shot. So offensive rebound, Scales is able to get his feet set, money in the bank. Close one here at Miami, Ghost Ballers by two over Trilogy. Time now for the Barstool Sports moment of the night. We go back to game two. Nate Robinson, game in his hands. Big baby, thought he had the steal. Nate. Not going to be denied for the win. Off glass and good. Tri State overpower. Nate to skate with the game winning shot. Terrific ball control, changing gears, composure, and just competitive spirit. The little guy delivers. He had 20 points, made four threes. Nate Robinson in one of the biggest wins of the season here in the Big Three. Uh, he just wasn't going to be denied. Say, we're going to get this win tonight, coach. Say, okay, prove it. He proved it. <laughs> Tri State keeping their slim playoff hopes alive. And a power team that still is in the driver's seat for a playoff spot, but not quite there yet. They're going to have to wait for the fallout next week in Dallas. Avery Johnson, close one here. 37 35 Ghost Ballers. Scales, Taylor, Solomon Jones, the second group. Scales over Samuels. Hawkins with the rebound. This is where they've been successful, going down to Samuels in the paint. See if he can make a good decision with the basketball. Hawkins to White. That was a laser of a pass, and White ties the game. And we talked about it going into the break. Offensive rebounding created a three-on-two situation there. That was a significant advantage. Mike Taylor with the answer. Gives him six. When he's in double figures, the Ghost Ballers have been really good. Three and one. He's getting close to ten right now. Samuels takes Jones outside and drains it. Ties the game again. I think Hawkins may be injured. Look like he bumped his right leg. He's going to probably foul here. He's trying to foul <laughs> so that he can get subbed out. So, so look like, you know, Hawkins bumped his right leg. He was trying to foul so that uh, Kenyon Martin can sub him out of the game. And Mike Taylor tried to be very creative. He knew it, trying to draw a, a three-point foul. Uh, Jones converts. So all of a sudden, we've got a two-point lead for the Ghost Ballers. And on the bench right now is David Hawkins and Samardo Samuels, who've been key for Trilogy. White's going to shoot a two-point shot, so White's out there, and he has Quintel Woods and Carlos Arroyo. A really close one down the stretch on what's been an exciting bye week night here in Miami. Six teams are off this week in the Big Three. Next week, the Big Three ball out. Yes. In Dallas, Texas. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? <laughs> 
And it's going to be Saturday on both CBS and CBS Sports Network. And it's going to be real interesting to see teams like Bivouac, the Ghost Ballers, potentially still alive. Knocking on the door of the top four. I thought I saw Lisa Leslie in the house tonight. Yes. It's Wood scores. Triplets head coach. They were in first at six and one. That's a great thing. There's some teams who aren't playing. The players and coaches who've made it to Miami. And it's Taylor just, again, he almost took out <laughs> the same group there in the corner. Yeah, and speaking of our players and coaches that are here that are not playing tonight or performing, it's just nice to see that they can come out and still support the big three. No doubt. It's a, it's a family. Get a trip to Miami. No game. Not bad. This has been quite a show as we look at a near victim of Taylor's hustle again. Avery, six ties here tonight. Right now it's Trilogy sitting on a two-point lead. Both teams in the bonus as White hits a two-point shot. This could be key going down the stretch. Yes, because now when you're in the bonus, you get the ball back. Uh, you don't have to free throw. White attacks Jones. Offensive foul. A huge call against James White, and Kenyon Martin can't believe it. Yeah, he better be careful here. He doesn't want to get teed up. Don't get teed up here. Now when you're trying to protect the four-point lead. Now Jones gets a two-point shot. And there it is, converts. Lead is two for Trilogy. Hottest team of the big three. Four consecutive wins coming in. Taylor over Arroyo. Second effort. Oh. Mike Taylor ties the game again. And Mike Taylor's the type of guy, even if he wasn't successful the second time, he was the third time he was going to stick with it. He's an underrated athlete for his size. Woods rimmed out against Scales. Scales has been clutch. He has scored 10. Goes to work. Drive on Woods. Scales a chance at three coming up as the Ghost Ballers have the lead. The ice man, George Garvin, was telling Scales to take him. <laughs> he said, take him. And he obeyed the coach's wishes. And I love when players drive to the basket and you know, contact is initiated and they play through contact. A lot of times in practice, you're doing it with a pad where you don't have a coach trying to hit a player. But in a real game situation, when you're trying to play it through forearms and elbows. Oh, Scales missed an open layup. It's still a point game for the Ghost Ballers. White brings Trilogy right back into it. We're tied at 47. No scales wish he can have that back. If they're not successful, he may have nightmares about that miss. Three for the win. Off the mark, Scales shoots, rebound. Jones open, another try. This time it's good. And the Ghost Ballers win it in Miami. Solomon Jones with the trifecta for the Ghost Ballers. Must win situation for the Ghost Ballers. And another game where, you know, Trilogy gets off to a slow start. And they were trying to depend on having a fast finish, but not tonight. They didn't have, they didn't have nearly as good a second half as they did last week. Veteran of eight NBA seasons from Mount Dora, Florida, near Orlando. Solomon Jones comes back to the Sunshine State, and he wins it for the Ghost Ballers. And give Mike Taylor credit. He thought about taking that shot, but he passed it to his teammate. He was wide, wide, wide open. So here in Miami, 
Enemies, Power, Trilogy, All Fall. Michael Rappaport with Solomon Jones. All right, Solomon, great game, great win. The Ghost Ballers came out with this victory. Three-headed monsters. The, the, they were, uh, they were, the triplets were going. The trilogy was going for. They were going for four in a row. You guys stopped them. How did it feel to shut them down here in Florida? Oh man, we just did what we had to do. Came in and played together on defense. You know what I mean? And we know that was a good team. But you know, collectively, everybody gave a great, a great effort, man. How much fun are you having this season in the Big Three? Oh man, I'm just getting here. I'm a newcomer, so this is all fun to me right now, man. I'm loving it, man. Well, got here with my guys. I'm loving it. I, I, what, what do you make of this team chemistry? You guys got a lot of veterans. You're a new face. You got Iceman. What do you make of this team chemistry? Oh, man, it, we, we real good. You know what I mean? Like, we gel together real fast. You know, we haven't had much time to practice, especially with two new guys. But, you know, the chemistry is good. And we got great leaders on our team. So we're able to come together and mess together real fast. All right, well, congratulations on a good win. Fellas, it's a great night of basketball here in Miami. It's been great work with you. And next week, we're back in Dallas for the big ball out. It's going to be a festival of basketball, big three basketball. I can't wait. Uh, buckle up, Michael Rappaport. It's a final in Miami. Three exciting games here tonight. And this caps the final one. Solomon Jones, game winner for the Ghost Ballers. More to come from Miami on CBS Sports Network.